be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, most high, you are without beginning or end and beyond our understanding. Your angel was sent to righteous Joseph to dispel his fear. Now confirm us in your truth and make us worthy of your salvation. Keep us from doubt and protect our faith that we may profess your miraculous birth and honor your pure mother Mary and righteous Joseph. We raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and your children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to God the Father who sent his angel in a dream to righteous Joseph, and to the glorious Son who dwelt in the womb of the pure Virgin, and to the Holy Spirit who revealed the mystery of the Holy Virgin's conception. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast and all the days of our lives, now and forever. Amen. 
Glory be to you, O Christ our God. You chose the most blessed among women to be your mother. And in a dream you reveal the mystery of your conception to righteous Joseph, to whom she was betrothed, filling him with all peace. Today we celebrate the feast of your divine revelation, the divine revelation that Joseph received, dispelling his fear, the divine revelation that filled all believers with joy, the divine revelation that removed every doubt from Joseph, regarding the purest of virgins. Now, O Lord, we implore you through the prayers of Mary, your mother, and through St. Joseph, your chosen one, and with the fragrance of this incense, that the celebration of this feast be for our salvation. Sanctify sinners and dispel all doubt and fear. Bring back those who are far and protect those who are near. May joy and peace fill the world and love and unity dwell within our hearts. May the departed find rest in your heavenly kingdom, and we raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. sweet fragrance who fills the whole world. You remove fear from Joseph's heart and confirm the truth about Mary's conception. Accept our incense, fill our souls with joy, and grant rest to all the departed, that we may raise glory and thanks to you now and forever. Kodishant, aloha kodishant, chayanatono kodishant, lo mo yagoto. Etraham alay. Kodishant, aloha kodishant, Sanctify our minds and purify our consciences. 
and we may praise you with purity and listen to your holy scriptures. To you be glory forever. Not fear, son of David, said the angel in a dream, for the child Mary carries is the Son of God most high. Reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and her children forever. Brothers and sisters, because of this, I, Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus for you Gentiles, if, as I suppose, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I have written briefly earlier. When you read this, you can understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to human beings and other generations as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles are coheres members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this, I became a minister by the gift of God's grace that was granted me in accord with the exercise of his power. To me, the very least of all the holy ones, this grace was given. To preach to the Gentiles the inscrutable riches of Christ and to bring to light for all what is the plan of the mystery hidden from the ages past in God who created all things so that the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known through the church to the principalities and authorities in the heavens. This was according to the eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness of speech and confidence of access through faith in him. So I ask you not to lose heart over my afflictions for you, this is your glory. Praise be to God always. For the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior, announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew, who proclaim life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The Apostle Matthew writes, 
Now this is the manner the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, was yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to separate from her quietly. Such was his intention, when behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said to him, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived within her. She shall bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he shall save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and he took his wife into his home. He, had no re he did not know her until she bore a son, and he named him Jesus. This is the truth, peace be with you. In Jesus our Lord, in whom we have a boldness and access with confidence by faith in him. In the name of the Father, the Son, of the Holy Spirit, amen. As we grow older, and as, of course, we live in society, cultures and communities all have visions of the world that they live in. How they see the world, what is the purpose of life? Is there any purpose in life? These things in antiquity, of course, were recounted by the myths. Unfortunately, these days when we talk about the word myth, it means ain't true. But that's not what a myth is. A myth is portraying in a story a truth, something that the community has seen, perceived, and that they try to explain. That's the second aspect of myth. It's not stupid. It is something which is trying to explain cause and effect, and which is very intelligent. It is stupid to look at the entire universe and say, ah, it just happened. That's stupid, because cause and effect, we've never had that in our lives, that anything just happens, which is why all the children will ask you at some point, where did we come from? Where are we going? And so we have our own myths. You'll talk about the cabbage patch and everything else that goes on until you come to that embarrassing conversation 10 years from now. So human society is always trying to explain and what it's actually doing is articulating the way it sees existence in the world. Sometimes it's much closer to reality, objectively speaking, that its philosophy is more accurate in observation and articulation in a reasonable and logical manner, and sometimes less so. Of course, we live in a society now whose view as a community is materialistic atheism. There's just stuff, that's the matter. 
There is no origin of it except for something we call the Big Bang, which is fine as far as the description goes, but why the Big Bang? That's not actually answered. And all of this stuff just interacts cause. It just happens. It happens to happen each time, year after year and generation after generation. None of you good women have ever had a puppy. You have human beings, human beings have human beings, there is a logic and a connection. But of course the underlying philosophy which is taught is that it just happens. There is no final cause, we would say in philosophy. Final cause meaning the purpose or the reason why we do something. You all got up this morning, you prepared yourselves, you got into your automobiles, you drove, because you wanted and intended as a purpose to go to the divine liturgy. Purpose is what motivates everything else we do. And we've all known people who, for various reasons, sometimes medically, become purposeless. They do nothing. They lay in bed all day long because they cannot see and motivate. Philosophically, this is the culture we live in if you want to apply it to the question of what is human life. It just happens, and it has no purpose. And of course now, human nature doesn't even have nature meaning you can define it any way you want. That a man is a woman, a woman is a man, a child is an adult, an adult is a child. And ultimately, depending on how much we can play around and diddle around genetically, I suppose somebody's going to want to be part bird or part fish or something else. But if there is no underlying objective reality of a nature that has any origin or any purpose, a goal, then why not? It makes perfect sense. Redefine it all. Pull it apart, rebuild it, make it the way you personally think is being better. These all ideas have consequences. All ideas are not, there is no neutral idea when it comes to human conscious living. Every action consciously that we embrace is a human action. And it will always have a morality, good or bad, behind it. Now, why am I elaborating this? Well, because in this very complex chapter of three of the letter to the Ephesians, remember, St. Paul is writing from prison. That's why at the end of these 13 lines, he says, don't be upset that I'm in prison for your sake, because this is actually your glory. And what is he actually talking about? It's a very complex text. I encourage you to go back and read it thoughtfully and with a bit of time. Because he starts talking about the fact that why am I in prison? What am I doing here? Is that I announced and I taught something. For you Jews who are at Ephesus, it's that the other nations are also part of God's plan. That God's plan does not just involve Israel. That's the first thing. So I was persecuted by the Jews because they didn't want others coming in to what they clearly understood to be their game. And the only one in town that God worked with, Israel. So the Jews persecuted me. And then that I said that the other nations are to collaborate in a singular project of God on earth, I also have the Greeks, the pagans, also in their confusion, persecuting. And so I'm in prison. But what is it that I'm actually doing, St. Paul says? I am announcing to you the mystery and in the text, I capitalized it in your bulletins. Because the mystery, by its very word, means something which is unspoken of, something which is unheard. He says, the mystery which has been with God from all eternity, before the ages, before creation, I have announced to you. I only have it by having it unveiled to me, by revelation, 
By having it unveiled to me, I announce to you what this mystery is. The mystery is that plan of one God. When we talk about the divine plan or the divine economy or the plan of salvation, this is what St. Paul is talking about in this epistle today. That God does have a rational, intelligent manner of why stuff exists. It doesn't just happen. That mystery being revealed that is with God ultimately is what we call in God the Logos. The Word was made flesh, our manners, the Word. In the divinity, God within his threefold person, we talk about the expression of the divine mind, the divine intellect. These words, they stumble and they stutter and they do not cover exactly when you try to apply it to an entity which is unlimited and infinite. But within God, the expression of the divine mind is what we call the Word. We also call it the Son. But it is God, simply speaking. The distinction is only that within the divinity, it is the expression of the divine plan, which simply is God. This, St. Paul says, I announce to you. And I have announced to you what this plan is. And that's why it shatters what Israel was, because Israel was only one project of God for time. But that project has been shattered, not because it's been destroyed, but because it has been opened up further to associate the other nations of the earth into the singular plan of God's mystery, this plan of redemption. This is why in Catholicism, it is not a question, something that we do because we like Christmas or we like marshmallow peeps in the springtime. It is something which is an illumination of the human intellect to see existence in a different way. It's why it transformed the world historically and has the capability of transforming this generation if we embraced it as the mystery. But you'll notice that what St. Paul also goes on to say is this mystery is realized in Christ. So that what he's telling us very clearly is that the mystery from all eternity, the divine mind, the divine word, becomes flesh and becomes man in the person of Jesus Christ. That's why I told you a few weeks ago as we began the whole preparation for the nativity, that first of all, the preparation is not Christmas. So you have the fast stipulations written on the back of the bulletin for you, which begin this week, to finish the last nine days in preparing for the nativity. But that the nativity, that Christmas is not about just a baby being born. It is the manifestation to humanity of the mystery, eternal mystery of God being unveiled and realized in this person, this child born to Mary of Nazareth. That is a totally different vision of what the nativity, what Christmas is. And so the church has taken this text of St. Paul and linked it together with us during these weeks to consider that the transcendent entity, the divine plan, the origin of all existence, and the contemplative goal ultimately of every human being ever born into this world becomes incarnate and realized in this child born of the womb of Mary of Nazareth. That is a totally different vision and St. Paul says, because this has been revealed to me, to speak to you who Christ actually is, to bring all the nations of the world into one divine plan, for that reason, I am in chains. But that's why he can say at the end, you may be 
upset by the fact that I'm in prison now. But the reason why I'm in prison is glorious. And therefore, since it is grounded in reality, grounded in this existence, then you should understand that in fact this is for your glory because this is the manifestation of the divine mystery. So the text is very complex in many ways, very simple in others. But St. Paul says that with the quotation I gave you at the beginning, that in Jesus Christ our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by faith in him. What I leave you is with from the Greek text. Paresia. Paresia is the word which is being translated with the word boldness, with great confidence in today's text. But paresia is actually charming that it's here. Because in the Greek, yes, we can translate in the English as being boldness, but what it actually is in the Greek is it, it's that easy intrusiveness that children have. You know, the four-year-old who stomps into the kitchen when you're making dinner and just impertinently throws out a question at you and really expects you to drop everything right now and answer the question? We don't get, I mean, it's, if your 18-year-old daughter did that, you'd be upset with her. Look, I'm busy right now, just ask me later. But there's something about the four-year-old stomping in and saying, Mom, I want to know why. And all parents find that charming. There's something about that, mm, that kind of naivete that comes with a child just knowing, I have a question now. And I want the answer now, of course, because time is completely irrelative to children. That is the word that St. Paul uses in this text. The revelation of the mystery in this child born to Mary. The revelation of this child that we have loyalty and faith to. That faith within him allows us access to that divinity with the same audacity, and even we can say the same naivete of paresia, that boldness to go before God and say, I want to know everything now. I want you to answer my questions now. And ultimately, I want you, as every child at four, they want to be their mom. They want to be their dad, of course, until they realize, well, my dad is not God. My mom is not God. They're not, well, not perfect. Then, of course, as a teenager, then we know not only are they not perfect, they're about the worst person I have ever encountered in my entire life. And then, of course, in our 20s, we begin to kind of find a little more equilibrium. But those first two decades are really painful. But within it, we have certain charming moments. And this word of this audacity of approaching the parent is the term that St. Paul, from prison, is using to describe what faith allows the children of God to have vis-a-vis -vis the divinity. And that's a beautiful thought that he's saying that that reality of the divine mystery, which if you consider it philosophically and theologically is a bit overwhelming, but he's saying that that divine mystery is made for us in a time, in a moment, and even appearing from the first moment as a baby, gives us in that faith and loyalty the ability to have that easy intrusiveness to God and to demand that wisdom to demand that light, and to demand that sovereign peace which transforms hearts. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, God substantial of the Father. To him all things were made, for us and men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became a man. For our sins, he was crucified from the conscious Pilate. He suffered the death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accord with his scriptures. He ascended into heaven. And I see it at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no right. We will be in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of God, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and the Lord of our God. And that is so long in the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <laughs> Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. We remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us. We recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, our Holy Father, Saint Mary, and Saint Jude. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and our sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered. 
for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. Continue with the anaphora of the Twelve Apostles on page 754. 754. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Merciful and holy Lord and Father, through your only begotten Son, you have prepared this spiritual banquet for us. Accept the offering of this bloodless sacrifice and grant us the gift of your Holy Spirit. Make us worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with pure hearts and divine love, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace to your holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor with love and faith that are pleasing to God. <clears throat> and security and your true love and divine mercy be with us and among us all the days of our lives that we may raise glory and thanks to you now and forever O oh Lord we bow before you and ask you to look upon us with mercy make us worthy to approach your holy altar with pure hearts and holy souls and bodies that we may raise glory and thanks to you, now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. right and just to glorify and praise you, O God the Father, for you are holy and the giver of life. You are blessed with your only begotten Son and your living Holy Spirit. You are surrounded by the cherubim and seraphim, who sing with your voices in heavenly melodies. They cry out, glorify and proclaim. Son became flesh of the pure Virgin Mary, and by his divine plan he saved and redeemed us. Waxoya bertal mi da karamara Sabahul mehne kul Hono denita Pahono dia Dakhlo faikun wakhlam sagiye Me taqseo me tihem Khusoyun khawme wa Alam <laughs> Sabestawa mene kulhu hono denita de mohondila diyati ki khadatam dakhlo faikun wakhlaf sagiye mete shadu meti hab khusoyon khawme wa khayyidan alam alami Whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do so in memory of me until I come again. And to save your inheritance when you appear at the end of time, to reward all people justly according to their deeds. For this your church implores you, and through you and with you implores your Father, saying, O Lord, 
sinners, we your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. so that none of your faithful may perish. Rather, make us worthy to live by your Spirit and to lead a pure life. We raise glory to you now and forever. Amen. We offer you, O Lord, this divine sacrifice for your Church, especially for our fathers and shepherds, Francis, the Pope of Rome, the Shadow Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, and all the Bishops of the True Faith, with blameless lives and with purity and holiness, may they guide your Church and present to you a faithful people who honor your name. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, your people here before you, especially those who have presented these offerings. Forgive them, so that they may always live blameless lives in your presence, and recognize the blessings that you bestow upon them. For you are good and rich in graces. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord Remember, O Lord, civil leaders throughout the world, that they may stand for justice and establish peace. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, all those who have pleased you from the beginning, especially Mary, the Holy Mother of God, and the prophets, apostles, martyrs, and confessors, John the Baptist, Stephen, the Archdeacon, St. Joseph, St. Marin, St. Jude, assist us through their prayers, and make us worthy to rejoice with them in your kingdom. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the fathers and teachers of the true faith who have endured sufferings for the sake of your church and your people. May we truly and faithfully follow in their footsteps. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, the faithful departed who have left us and have gone to their rest, hoping in you, awaiting that life-giving voice, calling them to life. Accept the offerings we present to you on their behalf, and have mercy on them in your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. us pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever.
Lord, and you are the pleasing oblation. You offer yourself for us. You are the forgiving sacrifice. Who offered yourself to the Father? You are the high priest. Who offered yourself as the Lamb? You are your mercy. May I pray to rise to the Jesus, which we offer to your Father through you. Compassionate Lord, may we, your lowly servants, be made worthy to pray with purity and holiness and to call upon you, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy light be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Yes, O Lord, lover of all people, deliver us from the evil one and from his deceitful ways. And do not forsake us, lest temptation overcome us. For yours is the kingdom, with your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads before the God of mercy, before his forgiving altar, and before the body and blood of our Savior, who gives life to those who partake of him, and receive the blessing from the Lord. O oh Lord, bless your faithful people who bow before you. Deliver us from all harm and make us worthy to share in these divine mysteries with purity and holiness, that through them we may be forgiven and be made holy, and we raise glory to you now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. One of us look to God with reverence and humility and ask Him for mercy and compassion. Holy gifts for the holy with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One, one Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit. Blessed, Blessed be the name of the Lord, for He is one in heaven and on earth. To give me glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God.
Again and again we thank you, O Lord, and raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us.
We thank you, Lord God and Father. We ask that this divine communion be for the forgiveness of sins and the glory of your holy name, and that of your only Son and of your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Lord Jesus, our God and Savior, you became flesh for our sake, and by sacrificing yourself, you saved us. Deliver us from damnation, and make us temples of your holy name, for we are your people and your inheritance. We glorify and honor you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever.